Good morning. I want to welcome you to Prairie Harvest this morning. Welcome home. Come in from the out if you're in the hallway. Um, can you guys just stand? I, I was just thinking this morning, um, I'd like for you to just sort of peek to your left. If you see somebody to your left, and if you're on the left, you know, peek way over to the right. If we could just take a moment to pray for a Holy Spirit encounter for the person that's next to us. So whether that's somebody right across the way or somebody right next to you. Let's just take a moment, ask God for the goodness of the Holy Spirit over that person.
this morning, this morning, um, my little boy came to me and he asked me, do you want to go where Jesus died? And I said to him, well, you know, Jesus rose again. And he said, no, that's not what I mean. And he made the, um, the figure of the cross. He said, do you want to go there? And I felt the Lord is asking that today of us as a church. Do you want to go there? Do you want to lose your life so that you can live? And if you haven't, um, I want to invite you today to the cross.
Yeah, Jesus, we just want to thank you for what you've purchased for us. Um, as, as Mandy shared that word earlier, I, I was just reminded of something that a, fr a friend of mine shared uh, a little video with me. And, and in the video, the guy was pointing out, you know, the thief on the cross next to Jesus that, that said, remember me in your kingdom. He was assured of a place in heaven right then and there. There was no baptism. There was no doctrinal rights and wrongs. There was no works following Jesus. He just received Jesus there on the cross next to him and was assured a place in glory. And, uh, you know, that's a great word, to go to the cross, you know. And, and uh, I just want to invite anyone today who's been struggling or maybe who doesn't know the Lord, uh, the salvation of Jesus. You know, there is nothing that you need to have as a prerequisite to come to him except your yes, I believe that you are our Savior and I desire to be with you in your kingdom. And so if that's you today, I just encourage you to receive Jesus, to grow closer to him, to, to just imagine yourself at the foot of the cross. There is no hindrance. There is no performance. There is nothing but Jesus welcoming you. And I just encourage you to receive that today. And Jesus, we pray this in your name and we thank you for what you've purchased for us. Amen. And we may be seated. I'm going to uh, just continue with the time of our offering. If I could have the ushers come forward, please, with the baskets, that would be fantastic. And I'm just going to read a scripture out of Luke 16, uh, verse 11 through 13. It says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you who will entrust the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And you know, I um, heard a good teaching on this recently. Uh, you know, if you can't be entrusted with with earthly wealth it's like it's like the baseline like the first rung on the ladder of of God's kingdom is if you you know we need to be able to be entrusted with with wealth in order to receive more of God's kingdom it's kind of like a a base level thing and and uh and so giving is important and it's an important heart issue and I just would ask you all to consider that um as you give I don't want to lay a heavy on anybody it does talk about being a cheerful giver and doing so as God would compel you but uh, it, it, it does seem in the scriptures to indicate that it's kind of an elementary thing that we need to get over in our trust and walk with God. And so I'm just going to pray, and I think the baskets have gone around. But Lord, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to steward what you have given us with uh, earthly wealth. And Lord, we desire to steward it well and, and uh, continue to grow in our walk with you and in stewarding the greater things of the kingdom that you offer us. And I ask that you would bestow those things upon us as we desire to demonstrate you to the world around us and experience the benefits of your kingdom in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, well, um, I believe we have a uh, Cambodia video. If you guys could cue that up and play that for us, thanks. <laughs> Foursquare Children of Promise International is one of our ministry partners, specifically the Prey Crane Church Orphan Home, which is located in Prey Vang Province, which borders on Vietnam in Southeast Cambodia. The majority of the villagers in the Prey Crane Village are very poor. They are very hard workers and oftentimes do not get enough nourishment in their diets. Lack of nutrition combined with poor living conditions are the grounds for deadly diseases. The primary factor contributing to the growing population of orphans is AIDS. Many of the children lost one or both parents to this disease. Childbirth complications and diseases like TB are also frequent causes of children being orphaned in this district. The caregivers in our orphan home are widows or widowers and become like mothers and fathers to these children. Our church has supported this home for over 18 years and we are the sole sponsor. That means we collectively send a little over $2,000 a month, depending on the U.S. conversion rate, to support the basic operations for this orphan home. And we need your help to continue to meet that need each month. So we ask that you would consider giving monthly financial support in addition to praying 
for the spiritual impact and practical needs of the caregivers and children. Please designate Cambodia on your e-transfer or offering envelope. We ask that you would prayerfully consider giving a one-time donation or even commit to giving monthly to this essential ministry to look after orphans and widows in their distress. Pastor Des will be in Cambodia next month to connect with leadership of FCOP. When he visits our orphan home next month, he would like to take a love offering with him to purchase a few necessities like school books, uniforms, shoes, bicycles, pillows, blankets, mattresses, and kitchen supplies. So please designate Cambodia on your e-transfer or offering envelope to contribute towards those needs. This has been your Ministry Minute for Cambodia. Okay, so yeah, if, uh, if anybody would like to donate towards uh, that offering again, I, for, I guess I forgot to mention it uh, in our initial offering, but you can also send tithes offerings or uh, donations to donations at phclc.org if you're e-transferring, and also there's the envelopes that you can designate uh, whatever you want that offering to be for. So if it's for Cambodia, you can mark that, and uh, so please feel free to do so. Um, just want to take an opportunity to welcome anybody that might be new to us here this morning. Uh, we have a Connect card, and we would love if you would fill one out. Uh, in the seat back pockets, in the rows, you'll see uh, Connect cards. And if you would, fill one out if you're new to us, and take it at the end of the service out to the Connect Center. Uh, we have a gift, and we would just like a chance to be able to connect with you. So uh, someone will be out there to greet you with a smiling face. Uh, just a few other announcements. So class 301 is starting this week, and it's the last day to register. So if you have not and you would like to, please do so. Uh, also, College and Career is hosting an event on March 16th, so please see your bulletin inserts for that. Uh, May Moore is uh, having a baby shower here at the church March 23rd at 4 p.m., so if you're interested in attending that, you may. And uh, also there is a Kingdom Festival Family breakfast coming up here at the church, I believe it is, on March 16th uh, in the morning at 8 a.m. There's going to be uh, Randy and Lori Moffat are coming to speak from Roblin. And uh, also, if you are new to us, uh, we do have a newcomer's meet and greet today. We're going to do this one after the 11 o'clock service. So uh, if you would like to join us for that, please either return or stick around for the second service. There will be some refreshments, and we'll be meeting in the Connect Lounge which is just past the main offices. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to uh, call up uh, Pastor Des right now, for or and Cheryl, I guess, uh, with the prayer announcement. Okay. Good morning, everybody. You can, yeah, you can come up here. Do a little dance. Make a little. Okay, so Des is going to Cambodia, and as you heard, you just heard, and uh, he has, or he's going to Vietnam and Cambodia, sorry. So he's going to Vietnam. He has 10 days of back-to-back uh, -back meetings and conferences uh, and services in Vietnam, and then from there, he hops over to Cambodia to visit our orphan home and to... Uh, you know, buy some things for them. And if you would have seen on the video, there was like a trailer that was like loaded with like bikes and pots and pans and all kind of things. Like one small thing like that, which is so minor to us, can really actually alter the quality of life over there. So I encourage you, whatever, you know, even if you can just give a small amount would be really great. But let's pray for Des because he's going to need supernatural grace and ability. <laughs> for all of that he is doing there. And we just, he's going as a representative of our network, of LifeLinks Network. Uh, and so we're praying, we're believing God for strategic connections there also for our network. So if you could just extend your hands toward him and we'll pray for him. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that this is a season of divine appointments, divine connections, of divine supply. Lord, you're moving in the earth and you want us to be in alignment and moving with you. And so, Lord, we just we pray for Des today, God, because we, as you're sending him as an ambassador, not only for our church, but for our network and our nation, um, Lord, I just pray that you, we pray that all grace would be supplied to him. We pray for supernatural energy and uh, ability on his physical body, and we pray that just for divine impartation and downloads, Lord, for the messages and the many things he's going to have to share with the leaders and the churches there. 
So God, we just lift him up right now, just like Aaron and her lifted up Moses' arms, and we pray your grace and your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, this is the time where we're going to dismiss our children, so I'm just going to pray, and if there are children in here that need to go back to Kingdom Kids, you may, and then we're going to carry on with the the word this morning. So, Father God, we do thank you for our Kingdom Kids, our program that we have at the back, and the awesome volunteers and coordinators we have for the program. Lord, I pray that uh, our children would get closer with you uh, through the teachings, and uh, that seeds of your kingdom would would be planted in them. Lord, I pray that they would bear fruit in their due time. And I just pray for your presence to be with them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, at this time, I'm going to call up Pastor Cheryl to give the word this morning. I know she's had a busy weekend, so let's just cover her in prayer also, because it's tough to go away to a conference and have to come back and preach first thing Sunday morning. So, uh, Father, we just lift up Cheryl to you. We thank you for her. We thank you for the things that you're speaking to her and doing in her life. And Lord, I pray that you would just grace her to... uh, communicate the things that you've dropped in her heart for us, and I pray that you would ready us to receive new things from you and your kingdom today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Michael. Michael, do you want to just take this? Thanks. Well, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. So I have a couple things on my heart this morning to share, and then um, at the end we're going to do something uh, that I feel we should do. So uh, just want to forewarn you of that. But uh, just before I start, I, is there anyone here that was at the uh, Tuesday at the dinner church this past week at Bruno's place? Anybody that was here? I know Des was. Okay, Ward was there. So, uh, do you want to say anything? Do you want to give a testimony about that? Yeah, you. <laughs> can you just come on up? Because I don't think everyone can hear you. I know, you can stand down here if you want. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ward, thanks. Not at all. I usually don't have much to say. Uh, So Tuesday, a group of us went to uh, Bruno's place to serve supper to these people. And I watched a few things that were extremely important from my perspective. Uh, We went in there, and the group of people that were there were very diverse wasn't what I was expected. I've had no experience with this sort of thing before in my life. Uh, Now, I watched Coralie sit with a young lady for probably, what was it, an hour? And just had this greatest conversation with her. Ended up giving her a Bible. And it was heartwarming, incredible. And then, of course, great food. It was good. Everybody got to eat. Uh, I talked to a few people myself. Uh, because I was kind of a fish out of water in this situation. Uh, I was apprehensive about talking to people, but uh, I did talk to a few people and just had great conversation. Ian had another great conversation with the young gentleman there, and when I talked to Ian after the fact, it was just an extremely satisfying conversation that he had as well. I encourage anybody who wants to volunteer and come to this thing it's a great experience. Awesome. Thanks, Ward. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know, uh, we did the first dinner church uh, outreach kind of a thing at Bruno's Place, which is an emergency shelter here in town that is run by uh, this, some of the church here. And uh, so if you want to get involved, uh, like you just, just you know, reaching out to the, the, the clients there, showing them the love of God. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think we make being an ambassador for Christ a little bit too complicated, you know. Uh, but really, like, it's as simple as showing people God's love. You know, reaching out to them and showing them that God actually really loves them right where they're at. You know, when we look in the Gospels, we see that. We see that that was how Jesus worked. That was how he ministered, right? 
So uh, kudos to those that were involved in that. And uh, also, um, if you want to get involved, talk to Pastor Des. You'll have to wait a month because he's going to be gone. But talk to him because that's going to be ongoing uh, once a month. And I believe that sharing testimonies is part of what we need to do here every Sunday. You know, like we, we live our life with God out there in the community. And then when we come in here, we, get, we, we should be testifying and celebrating what is God doing in our life, right? Amen? So... Praise God for that. Anyway, um, I'm going to just have a quick prayer here, and then we're going to go into our word. I have a real simple word for us this morning, but I think it's a really important one. At least it certainly has been an important one in my life. But uh, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for your presence here. I thank you, God, that you love us, your heart is toward us, and God, that your desire is to do uh, amazing things in our lives, God, if we will avail ourselves to you. Uh, and say yes to you. And so this morning I ask for your help, God, as I share your word. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you just be here in power. Lord, that you would engage our hearts, and that you change our lives, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, the title of my message this morning is By My Spirit. And uh, if you want to turn with me, we're going to read from Mark 5. Uh, Mark 5, verses 1 to 20. There's a story there. Uh, that I want to read this morning. It's going to be our launching off point for my message today. Um, so Mark 5, 1 to 20, do we have that scripture? We're just going to give that a read. All right, so it starts at verse 1. It says, uh, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he, that's Jesus, had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he'd often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken to pieces, and neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice, saying, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you that you do not torment me. And then he, Jesus, said, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And then he asked him, What is your name? And he, being the man, <laughs> said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding near the mountains. So the demons began begging him, saying, Please send us into the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. <clears throat> there were about 2,000 in the herd, and they ran violently down a steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and the country. And when they went out to see what had happened, and they went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion of demons sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told how it happened to him who had been possessed and about the swine, and they began to plead with Jesus to depart from their region. And when he, Jesus, got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might stay with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, and he said, go to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he has had compassion on you. And he, the man, be departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis and all the region what Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled. Amen. This is quite an amazing story, and there's several things about this story that I find really intriguing and actually are really relevant for us today that I kind of want to look at. Um, first of all, it's really interesting that um, when Jesus came, like it says, he set foot on the, the land where they were there, and immediately this demonic spirit came running to him or this man came running to him, and the demon said, oh, are you here to torment us? And you know, like, the, like when, <laughs> when darkness confronts light, there's always, uh, or light confronts darkness, there's always a reaction. There's always a reaction. You know, we don't like that reaction. 
we'd like to avoid that reaction if at all possible, but let's just be real. There is no way that light can confront, I mean, I'm talking spiritual things, that light can confront darkness without there being a reaction. And we have to be able to be okay with that. Do you know what I'm saying? We do. I'm serious. So Jesus, wherever he went, he confronted the kingdom of darkness. And there was always a reaction. You know, and it's funny how the, 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 the demon said, oh, don't torment us. And, and that's one of the ways that, that the enemy um, responds or reacts or lashes out when we come into a situation carrying the light. He tries to accuse us of being unkind, insensitive, unloving. <laughs> Sound familiar? Don't buy it. Don't be intimidated by that. It's a ploy of the kingdom of darkness. How kind would Jesus have been if he would have said, oh, I'm sorry, I won't bother you. <laughs> and that's how, oh, I'm serious, that's how we kind of can be sort of hogtied. And, you know, we're supposed to be carrying the kingdom of God and administrating the kingdom of God in a dark world, and the enemy uses these crazy little ploys to intimidate us, right? You know, and, and we, we can't buy into it. You know, Jesus, like I said, everywhere he went, he would confront the, the kingdom of darkness. Most of us do not like confrontation. We try to avoid it, if at all possible. And, and I mean, you know, of course, we, want, we don't want to just be like a bull in a china shop everywhere, right? You want to have grace and so on. But the thing is that um, confrontation, like I said, it's going to be just a natural result of being filled with the kingdom of light when you're walking in a world of darkness and evil. And like if you're one of those people that actually likes confrontation and seeks it out, well, come, we'll pray for you afterwards and we'll get you some counseling. <laughs> but, the rea but we have to be able to be okay with the reality that confrontation is going to come. It, Jesus, it says that he, confrontation with the kingdom of darkness came because he was light in the world, just like we're called to be light in the world. You know, it says in uh, John 1, 3 to 5, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend with it. Jesus came. We have these scriptures here somewhere. Jesus came. Do you have those? scriptures. Um, Jesus came and, you know, he brought light into the darkness and the darkness could not deal. It was like, what? You know, it was reacting everywhere he went. Everywhere in scripture, darkness reacted to his presence. Like in Luke 4, 33, there's another story about he was in the synagogue. And in the synagogue, there was a guy that was possessed with a demon that started crying out and saying, don't torment me. And uh, I just thought that was interesting that it was in the synagogue. You know, just saying, I'm not going to elaborate on that. You think what you want. Anyway, <laughs> uh, demons hide in all kinds of crazy places, even, even in religious places. But anyway, um, so he went about all over the place he went, and he had having this impact on the kingdom of darkness. But what, you know, it's one of the things actually that made the Pharisees really mad and the, and the religious leaders because it showed them up. Because he's going around darkness, just freaking out everywhere he goes, and they go wherever they want, and nothing happens. Nobody gets healed, nobody gets delivered, nobody, you know. It, so it was this, this contrast made them really mad, and they reacted to it as well. Um, you know, I, I use this story about the, the man in, in the, you know, the, the Gadarenes, because it's really quite spectacular. Like, he didn't just have a demon, right? Like, he had... <laughs> thousands of demons. It said legions. Legions is thousands. So this guy had major issues. He was really in bad shape, you know, and no one could help him. It is such an interesting story. But what is so incredibly profound to me about this story is that this man went from the crazy, possessed, naked man who lived in the graveyard to an evangelist 
like in one giant leap. He went from one thing to a totally another thing. And, you know, God can change your story in an instant. He can change your reputation in a heartbeat. You know, we look at people and we think, oh my gosh, like that person has so many problems, right, or so many issues or whatever. But we forget, we forget about this God, this Jesus, who had one encounter with a demon-possessed man who had thousands of demons, and in an instant he was set free. That's the Jesus that we serve. That's the Jesus that lives inside of you. That Jesus. Friends, we have no reason to be intimidated by the kingdom of darkness because it is that Jesus who said, he is living on the inside of you. No longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. You are an ambassador for a kingdom of light, a kingdom that has no enemy that can stand against it. Do you realize that? And like there is so much hope in this gospel. Like this man, like, you know, that, that's something that just, like, you know, what you were saying about the thief on the cross, right? God can change your reputation in an instant, in a heartbeat. You can be somebody different than you were before. And, you know, we need to realize that. It's God's one-step program. You know, I, don't get me wrong. I don't have any problem with 12-step programs or anything that can help people get healed. And people need healing, right? Healing's a process. But it cannot ever take the place of an encounter with God. Only God can get you free from demonic bondage. Only God <clears throat> Jesus, you know, he, that, he came, first of all, demonstrating the kingdom. And then he said to his disciples, now you go and give the kingdom, bring the kingdom to the world around you. Right? <clears throat> Jesus commanded his disciples to bring the power of God, not a doctrine or a theology or a set of practices, even though sound doctrine is super important, all these things are important, you know, preaching the gospel is important. Romans 5 says, how can they come if they don't hear the message? Someone's got to preach it. But, but Jesus sent his disciples with this mission. He said, go, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and tell them the kingdom of God has come to you. Amen. Amen. Because it wouldn't really be good news if that wasn't part of it. How could it be? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if yes, I know Jesus loves you, and he died for your sins, and he will accept you into heaven if you accept him and say, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. All of that is fantastic. But if it can't set you free from bondage, you know what I mean? Like it's, that's half, that's half of it. But the other half is you can be free. You can be whole. You can be delivered. I'm telling you, I had problems when I got saved. I had demons. I'm just telling you, like straight up, like I came from a family with a lot of issues and and I had demonic oppression in my life. I was so depressed, like I, I don't even know how I functioned. I couldn't keep a job. I, I had major anxiety attacks. I, I had all kinds of crazy things that I was fighting with, you know? All thanks to my family tree, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it wasn't like I, I'm not, I didn't live some kind of horrible life to that, you know? Like that guy in the Bible where Jesus, his disciples said, who sinned that this man was born blind? It's like, well, yeah, like, you know, uh, sometimes things just come down to you. <laughs> you know, they just come down the family tree. But anyways, I had a lot of problems, but, you know, God set me free. He set me free. You know, they tried with this demon-possessed man. Can you imagine? They tried to probably tried to clean him up, dress him up. They tried to bind him. Maybe they tried to counsel him. Maybe they tried to, I don't know, do all kinds of things with him, you know. 
trying to help him out, trying to control his disturbing behaviors. You know, if it was now, they'd say, okay, let's give him some medication. Let's just calm this guy down a bit, you know. They tried all kinds of things, but nothing worked because what he needed was a confrontation, an encounter with the power of God. He needed the kingdom of light to come and confront the kingdom of darkness that was oppressing him to bring deliverance to him. Amen. It says in the book of Isaiah, it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For what? For what reason? To come to church on Sunday? <laughs> I'm, I'm all for church, obviously, because I'm here. But it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me to open prison doors, to set the captives free, to bring recovery of sight to the blind. That's why God, he says, he's anointed you. The model Jesus gives us, gives us for being equipped for ministry is the model of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus gives us power to confront and overcome all the power of the enemy. Acts 1.8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So that scripture says two things. It says, you will receive power. Now, power, that's that word dunamis. It means not just like strength. It doesn't mean strength. Like if I was bigger than Des, you know, and, and I came up and I, you know, could push him, I could push him over. If that's strength. But power is something different. Power is supernatural, the kind of power that this is talking about. So the kind of power this is talking about is if Des is way bigger than me and I'm just little, that I could push him over. Because <laughs> it's not rooted in natural, natural strength or ability. But it says that he calls us, to, he gives us power to be my witness. And that means that that power equips you, qualifies you, and enables you to be an ambassador for Christ in this world. It qualifies you to confront the kingdom of darkness. And that's what being a Christian is all about. It, it's about confronting the kingdom of darkness and bringing the kingdom of healing, deliverance to those that are broken. Like I can, I, let me tell you a story about a man named Reuben, which some of you would have heard about, okay? So Reuben was a First Nations man that came, I think he lived in Brandon slash Winnipeg, maybe it was kind of transient between those two places. And uh, so he, Reuben had a lot of problems. He, you know, he had some serious things going on in his life, but one of the worst of which was that he got cancer. And he was going to the hospital and getting treat, you know, treatment from the doctor, whatever, but they said, sorry, Reuben, you've got, I think it was pancreatic cancer, bladder cancer, but he had cancer in more than one place, and his condition was terminal. And they said, you know, that he was going to die. And so Reuben began to call out to God, and he said, I don't know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And long story short, I don't, I don't really know all of the details, but somehow he landed up here in Yorkton, was going through the drive through at, at McDonald's, and uh, he said, you know, I'm here, I got cancer. And he was talking to the lady there, so, like one of the workers, and she said, oh, go to Prairie Harvest Church, get some prayer. So, <laughs> so he came to the church here one morning, and I remember when he walked in, and uh, we were having service here that day, and I know he encountered a few people, different people, and people prayed for him. But I remember him coming up to the front here and asking for prayer and telling us, I I'm going to die. I got cancer. And, and, I, and I just came for prayer. And he told us a little bit of his story. And Desmond and I prayed for him. And I remember just the flood of the love of God that I felt for that man. As I laid my hands on him, I could feel the virtue of the kingdom of God go through me. I could feel it. I could feel God's love pour into that man and pour over him. So we prayed for him, and we didn't really, you know, he left, which often happens. You know, sometimes we'll pray for people here, and then they go, and we don't really know 
what happens. But in Ruben's case, I was like, whatever, I don't know, it was a couple months later, or something like that. We were on holidays and we were driving and we were listening to recorded message of the service and of our service here because we weren't here. And, and then all of a sudden they said, oh, we got somebody who wants to give a testimony today. And this man takes the mic and he says, hi, I'm, I'm, my name is Ruben. And I came here and I was dying of cancer. And a man with glasses and, and his wife prayed for me. And, and I know lots of other people prayed for him too. And he said, I felt the love of God like I never felt the love of God before. And, uh, long, and he said more things, but long story short, he was totally healed from cancer. And Reuben is going to be a veterinarian very soon. He went to school. T He's in his fifth, fifth year veterinarian school. Yeah. That's the, the kingdom of light confronting the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And there are other stories like that, but that one was particularly, particularly amazing. So we are called to confront the kingdom of darkness, but we're not called to do it on our own. You know, um, Jesus calls us because he said, for this reason, the Son of God was made manifest. It says in 1 John, the book of John says, for this reason, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to confront darkness. And then he gave us that same commission. Um, you know, we cannot tolerate what Jesus came to eradicate. We can't accommodate what Jesus came to terminate. Like that, we shouldn't ever, right? So sickness like you know not every time i pray for somebody that's sick do they get healed but many times i've seen it happen when people have got healed you know and like we we we're called to confront the kingdom of darkness jesus or john the baptist said oh sorry matthew 10 8 jesus said this to his disciples he says, as you go preach the kingdom saying heaven has come to you heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead and cast out demons John the Baptist said, there is one coming after me, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John's baptism was the baptism of repentance. You know, the baptism of repentance and turning away from sin and dead works and turning away from darkness. But Jesus' baptism was the baptism of power. Amen. He said, there's more than just repentance. There's power. Power to live a holy life. Power to be a witness. And power to confront darkness. Acts 1 8 says, or Acts 1 verses 3 to 5, and then verse 8 says, He commanded them, Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Amen. So I just want to look at this for a minute here. <clears throat> power. I got Starbucks. <laughs> anyway. I just want to look at these three points, power to confront, power to witness, and power to, uh, to overcome the spirit of darkness. So like, power to confront the kingdom of darkness, this is really important because, you know, like I said before, like the enemy tries to intimidate us. The enemy pushes back. And without that divine ability from God, without that supernatural power, we can't resist that pushback because it's, it's spiritually energized. It's demonically energized. And, and uh, it's real, you know? Like sometimes when I come here, like, you know, on a Sunday morning to preach or something like that, like, you know, I can feel resistance. I can feel the pushback, you know? But God gives us power to resist the enemy. And that power... Ha, it, like that, what God gives us, it has power over sickness, and it has power over the enemy. 
And so like Paul, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 13 and verse 8, like there, he was, they, he had got invited by some really important people to uh, share the gospel. And uh, so he was going to go and share the gospel before the proconsul, and there was like, I forget the guy's name, but really important dude. And he's like, yeah, we want to hear the gospel. This was a big deal. And, uh, and so Paul goes there, and then there's this guy, I forget his name, starts with E, but he, uh, you can look at the story up if, in Acts 13 if you want. But there was this guy, he was a sorcerer. And so then he comes and he starts actively resisting and like t telling the people, no, oh, don't listen to this guy, he knows nothing, and you know, all this kind of stuff. But Paul, it says, in, it says in the scripture, it says, and Paul being full of the Holy Spirit, Paul being emboldened by the Holy Spirit, turns and confronts this man and takes authority over that demon that was controlling him. And if you read the story, you, see, you find that the man was struck blind and, all the, you know, and then all the gospel was able to be shared and it was all, many people believed, you know. If we don't have that power and that ability to confront the enemy, <laughs> we're not going to be able to share. That is really important for sharing the gospel. Like it's super important for, for God's, for the gospel to be shared. So it's a boldness to be a witness for Christ. Like in Acts 4.29, Peter and John were healing the sick and all kinds of people were getting saved and the, you know, the leaders got uptight about it and they, they ca ca captured them and, you know, they, you know, says they scolded them or whatever, I don't know, but, um, and told them, don't you preach in the name of Jesus anymore. They tried to shut them down. Don't you preach this Jesus. And uh, so later on, it says that they went to prayer and, and they prayed this. They said, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants boldness that we may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders will be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. The Holy Spirit is given to give us boldness. And then the third thing that the Holy Spirit is, is given to us, the power of the Spirit is given to us to deal with persecution and opposition and uh, mistreatment. Um, like Stephen, you know, it says in Acts 7.55, they stoned Stephen. Uh, it says he was a man full of the Holy Spirit. But it says that when they were stoning him, he being filled with the Spirit looked up to heaven and saw God. And he forgave them. And he said, God, forgive them for what they're doing. Only the Holy Spirit can give you that ability to do that, to forgive those that mistreat you and to stand against that kind of opposition. So <clears throat> the Greek word for boldness is per parasia, which means uh, freedom of speech uh, and confidence, outspokenness. Um, so, you know, I don't know about you, but more and more all the time, like, we really need this boldness from the Lord. We really need it. Like, we have to be able to confront all the lying ideologies in our culture and not be scared and intimidated and back down from the enemy, right? And we have to do it with wisdom, of course, but, but we have to do it. Um, so why you need the Holy Spirit, like I said, you need it to live a holy life, to stand against the evil of our culture, to be a bold witness for Christ, to have power to confront darkness, and you need it because Jesus commanded us to be filled with the Spirit. It says in Acts 1, 4 to 5, being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but that they should wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. <clears throat> it's the Holy Spirit that qualifies and equips us. You know, we have things like discipleship classes and, and uh, you know, you can have ministry training and all those things can teach you things that will help you 
They'll help you to grow. They'll help you to mature. They'll help you to maybe be a good orator in front of people or something like that. You can learn those things. But you cannot learn being filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't. There's no substitute for the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus gave us this model, and clearly there is no... Um, there's just... Like, that's the model he gave us. Not, not a person being, like, filled with knowledge or filled with doctrine or with good, you know, talents and, you know... Some people are so talented and they can do all these things, which is great because God will use your talent. But there is no substitute for being filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit. It's so important. But it, it's the thing that qualifies you for ministry. And so, you know, 1 Corinthians 1, 26 says this. It says, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you are wise by human standards, not many influential, not many noble, but God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and he chooses the weak things of the world to shame the things that are strong. He chooses the lowly things and the despised things, the, the things that are not, to nullify the things that are. So we don't, like Paul said, you know, I've got all these letters behind my name, but they mean nothing to me now. All that I care about is Christ and him crucified. I preach Christ and him crucified. Why? Because Christ and him crucified is the reason that there's Christ in me, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? God radically wants to empower and use us to confront the works of darkness. Amen. So, last thing I want to say is that, you know, sometimes we feel like like there's these special people that they have special anointing or special gifting or whatever. <laughs> and, and those are the ones that do all this great stuff like heal the sick or, you know, preach the gospel at crusades or do all these things. But we, that's not the model we see in the Bible. Like we do see that there are certain people that are called. There's the fivefold ministry and all that. But when you look at scripture, you see that every believer is a sent one. Every believer is called to be filled with the power of God. Every believer is called to share his faith, to be a witness for Christ. Every believer is called to stand against the work of darkness and be an ambassador for the kingdom. Every one, every one of us. Amen? Every one of us is called and qualified. You are sent by, you are a sent one. You are sent by Jesus, John 17, 18. It says, he said, as you have sent me into the world, he was talking to the Father, so I have sent them. John 20, verse 21, as the Father has sent me, Jesus said, so I am sending you. And Luke 9, 2, he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Finally, Matthew 28, the Great Commission says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Amen. You are sent with power. And so, um, you know, Acts 148, it says that they assembled together and Jesus told them to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard from me, for John baptized you with the water, but I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit not, not, not many days from now. And so, verse 8, it says that he told them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses in all in Jerusalem, all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So I just really felt like, I don't know, this was on my heart today, and I feel like what I really want to do is I want to actually pray for us to receive the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Um, because we're just in a day and an hour when more than ever, like, we really need that. And, uh, you know, we get the Holy Spirit simply by asking, the Bible tells us. When, when, we, when we are born again, we receive the, it's the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. He's resident on the inside of us. But then the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit coming in power upon us to do the works of the ministry, to heal the sick, to, to, to be a witness for Christ, God has not left us 
powerless. And I don't know about you, but I've had plenty enough experiences of feeling intimidated by the enemy. And, and I need the power of the Holy Spirit every day. I need the power of the Holy Spirit just to get up here and talk. Because, you know, when I first became a Christian, like, I, I was so terrified the first time I stood in front of people. Like, I, I seriously, I went, and I, I went away from that experience, and I said, I am never doing that again. Like, I just felt sick, you know? It takes, you know, the Holy Spirit wants us to overcome that intimidation and that fear. And, you know, he says in... Uh, in Luke 11, chapter 13, he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit here. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And then he says, If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the, Holy, will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. So I just want to sing, if you would just stand, I just want to sing a, a worship song together this morning, and then, and then I want to pray for, basically, if you feel like, yeah, I need the power of the Holy Spirit to... You know, to stand against the enemy, to bring the, you know, confront darkness. God wants to empower you today. He wants to empower you to be an ambassador for his kingdom. Amen. Let's sing together. Lord. God, we want your Holy Spirit. We know we need your Holy Spirit. And you said, God, that if we ask for your Holy Spirit, that you would give it, Lord. Lord, you're not going to withhold it from us, Lord. You said, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Spirit to those who ask? So, Lord, we're asking today. God, we need your Holy Spirit, God. In this day, Lord God, when the kingdom of darkness is trying to intimidate and, and silence and oppress your people, God, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we're asking you today. And, Lord, we know that, God, you said, if we just ask in faith, that's all we need to do, and you'll give it. So, so we thank you for that, Lord. And, God, I just, I just pray this morning that you would just, 
all over this room, God, that you touch people, God, that you would just begin to release your Holy Spirit to every hunger heart. Lord God, just like I have got filled with the Holy Spirit and it's happened time and time again, Lord, I, this morning, God, I pray every hungry heart you'd fill, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. This morning, if you want I, to receive prayer, I want to pray with you and just ask the Lord and agree with you for him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. So if you would like to receive prayer, I just want to invite you to just come on up as the worship team plays. Uh, and uh, we just like to pray for anybody that would like to receive prayer for this. Um, and otherwise, if uh, you know, you're dismissed to go, if you're, if you're new to us here, just invite you to stop at the Connect Center and, and grab your, pick up your welcome gift there. Someone would love to meet you there. But God bless you. I pray that you get go and get filled in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as I said, if you want prayer, come on up. I'd really love to pray for you this morning. Amen. <laughs>